What's up everybody? Welcome back to part 12 of my John Farrick book review, Wrecking Crew, Demolishing the Case Against Stephen Avery. You, you can pick this book up on Amazon. That's where I got my copy. If you're interested in the Making a Murderer case, the case against Brendan Dassey and Stephen Avery, definitely pick up this book. He goes over more than just making a murderer in the book as well. He talks about other cases and other situations. I definitely recommend picking this up. So what we're doing is we're going over John Farrick's book and the information that was available at the time the book came out. Of course, a lot of new information has come out since, but we're focusing on what was in the book and what was available at the time. This section of the book was very quote heavy from Kathleen Zellner and what a bunch of amazing quotes he inserted in this book from Kathleen Zellner and that's basically what I'm gonna read here to you now. Kathleen Zellner states, because the state did not need to establish a motive, it did not spend any time trying to figure out why Teresa Halbach was murdered. Both Stephen Avery and Teresa Halbach are victims of a justice system whose success depends on the integrity, competence, and devotion of the judges, law enforcement, prosecutors, and defense attorneys. Both Teresa Halbach and Stephen Avery have yet to receive justice. Teresa Halbach has all been but forgotten in the rush to judgment to convict and maintain the conviction of Stephen Avery. Stephen Avery has not been forgotten, but has been buried alive because of those individuals who were supposed to save him from a second wrong conviction failed. Now, like I said, the, that is a quote from Kathleen Zellner. Here's another one. Ken Kratz's theory of Teresa Halbach's murder is one of the most preposterous tales ever spun in an American courtroom. If Ken Kratz's theory were true, then Stephen Avery is a true idiot savant. Ken Kratz, in a barrage of plot errors, creates a tale in which Stephen, the savant, without wearing gloves, manages to not leave a single fingerprint on Teresa Halbach's draft form. Kathleen Zellner continues, while Stephen Avery, the idiot, deposits six drops of blood on the front seat by the ignition on the rear door, Stephen Avery, the savant, trying to save the day, manages to not leave a single drop of blood on the RAV4 door handle, the key, and lanyard, the gear shift, or the battery cables. Nowhere. No fingerprints found anywhere. To absolutely ensure that his DNA is linked to the vehicle, Stephen Avery, the idiot, locks the car and opens the hood latch so that his sweat DNA will be found on the latch, just in case the jury is smart enough to figure out that his blood in the RAV4 was planted. Stephen Avery, the savant, burned the body in his burn pit in world record time. It takes a lot longer for a body to burn than what the state is saying Teresa Hallbach's body burned in. To the point where 60% of the bones are completely disappeared and all but two teeth are evaporated. Stephen Avery, the idiot, picked out some of the larger bones and moved them to his sister's burn barrel and the Manitowoc gravel pit. One would never imagine being convicted on such an idiotic theory, but Stephen Avery was. To understand how this happened, one must examine the other side of the coin, the performance of Stephen Avery's trial defense counsel. Now she's talking about Jerry Buting and Dean Strang. The state convicted Stephen Avery on this ludicrous theory because trial defense counsel, just again, Jerry Buting and Dean Strang, only had two experts to combat the state's 14 experts. The trial defense team during the first trial, counsel claims evidence was planted but failed miserably in proving the assertion by lacking experts in bloodstain pattern analysis, DNA ballistics, forensic fire trace forensic pathology, and police procedure. 
Additionally, trial defense counsel failed to conduct a thorough investigation of the victim's background, deleted cell phone calls, potential third party suspects, or to construct an accurate timeline of Teresa Hallbach's and Stephen Avery's activities on October 31st, 2005. Trial defense counsel, by not carefully reviewing the discovery and not having the appropriate experts, failed to realize Stephen Avery's groin swab had been substituted for the hood latch swab by law enforcement and the key discovered in Stephen Avery's bedroom was a sub key and was planted by Lieutenant Lank and Andrew Colburn immediately before it was discovered. Teresa Hallbach's last appointment was at was not at Stephen Avery's and the CD of her voicemail left on those people's answering machine was either concealed or destroyed by the state. Now she is stating that Teresa Hallbach had another appointment after Stephen Avery's, that Stephen Avery was not the last appointment she had on October 31st, 2005. And that evidence was either concealed or destroyed by the state to mislead the jury into believing Teresa Hallbach's last stop was Stephen Avery's. Current post-conviction counsel, Kathleen Zellner, has retained 10 experts and two investigators who have developed strong evidence that undermines confidence in Stephen Avery's verdict. Current post-conviction counsel is providing this court with new evidence which establishes that Teresa Hallbach had her and her vehicle left the Avery property that Bobby Dassey gave false testimony about Teresa Hallbach and her vehicle not leaving the Avery property, that Bobby Dassey and Scott Taddock gave false testimony establishing each other's alibi, and that the Dassey computer contained images of Teresa Hallbach, violent pornography, and dead bodies of young females viewed by Bobby Dassey at relevant time periods before and after the murder of Teresa Hallbach. Bobby indicated that he was, now this is where she, this is what she's talking about, how Scott Taddock and Bobby Dassey were each other's alibi. Bobby indicated that he was traveling on the same highway 147 towards the property he hunts deer on, and he did observe an individual known to him as Scott Taddock. Bobby indicated that Scott would be able to verify precisely what time he had seen Bobby. At 2.41 p.m., Teresa Hallbach forwarded a call from her cell phone to a voicemail indicating she was preoccupied or distracted by another matter. Her cell phone was deactivated after this point leading to the reasonable inference that she was assaulted and murdered at approximately 2.45 p.m. Further evidentiary support for Teresa Hallbach being assaulted and murdered at the cul-de-sac on Cuss Road is the scent and cadaver dogs that were sent there. They detected a suspected burial site immediately south of Cuss Road. Bobby stated he would hunt on the property behind Scott Taddock's house off of State Highway 147, which was east of the salvage yard. At 3.02 p.m. on October 31st, 2005, Bobby's cell phone hit off tower 363X, which is 5.47 miles west of the Dassey residence. Bobby's hunting spot was only 1.5 miles away from Tower 370X. If Bobby was hunting where he claimed to be hunting east of the Avery property, there would be no reason that his call at 3.02 p.m. would have bounced off Tower 363X west of the Avery property instead of 370X. Then Kathleen Zellner lays out this. Teresa Hallbach's arrival on October 31st, 2005. Bobby Dassey watched her from his window 
as he had in the past, but denied to police that he was aware that she was coming on the property. As Teresa Halbach left the property, Bobby Dassey followed Teresa Halbach and was persuaded to pull over in the Cuss Road cul-de-sac and open her rear cargo door to obtain her camera for a photograph. Advances were made, a struggle ensued, and Teresa Halbach was knocked to the ground by a rock, causing blood splatter to land on the inside of the rear cargo door. Teresa Halbach was lifted into the rear of the RAV4 and driven to the area of the, sus of the suspected burial site she was assaulted and then driven back to the Avery property. The hair and blood stain patterns on the inside panel of the rear cargo area of the RAV4 created by Teresa Halbach's injured head. As the car was driven back to the Avery salvage yard, the RAV4 was pulled into the Dassey garage and Teresa Halbach was shot in the head twice in the Dassey garage. The, the Dassey garage was never checked for forensic evidence of any type. So that's where I'm going to leave part 12 of Wrecking Crew demolishing the case against Stephen Avery. Like I said, you can pick it up on Amazon. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day and I'll see you again soon.